not afraid to ask questions and find out, get down to the bottom of things. Sometimes uh, we are not enough like Thomas. We just hear something, we just kind of take it okay. Sometimes you need to ask more questions to get down to what that really means. And that's what Thomas did here. So this is over in John chapter 14. Uh, Jesus just explains, says, don't be troubled, I'm going to leave you guys, but I'll be coming back. And he says, you guys know where I'm going. So just remember that. Well, Thomas says, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how are we going to know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. So Jesus answered his question. He says, I'm the way, the truth, the life. That's all you need to know. If you know that, that'll get you wherever I want you to go. And that's what about our life. If we know Jesus, that gets us where we need to go. Because he is the way, he is the truth, he is the life. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, amen. Let's pray this morning. Father God, we thank you for this day. It is a glorious day because you've created us for this day. We thank you that we can be here together in this place, Lord God, to worship you, to bring our cares before you, to bring our praises before you, to rejoice before you, to bring our offerings before you. Lord, there's so many reasons we come here today. Most of all, we come here because you are the way, the truth, and the life. Let us not just know that and say that, but let us live that as well, just as pastors have been teaching us, Lord, to go out and live our life for you, not just to keep it inside this building, but to get it out beyond this building and to, to become all that you want us to be, to bring other people into your kingdom as well. We just thank you, Jesus, so much. And we just look forward to so much to worshiping you this morning and, and gathering together and hearing your stories and your testimonies, Lord, of what you're doing in people's lives. We just give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Um, announcements. Stacia. I mix things up a little bit. We don't do the normal routine when I'm here. Okay, Erin usually does announcements, but she's downstairs with the little children today, so I'm going to cover for her a little bit. Um, first thing is that the women's retreat is this weekend. Who's all going? Can, can you raise your hand? I know we have quite a few ladies going, so we need to keep them all in our prayers. Um, I know that it's supposed to, it should be a fantastic weekend for you all. I wish I was going, um, but we'll keep them in our prayers, um, as well as Pastor Edgar and Denise and their family. Um, Mobile Day, so I'm going to be handing around a sign-up sheet again. I handed this out last week, but we had kind of a low attendance last week, so I'm going to hand it around again. There's two things on here, though. The top sheet is for Mobile Days. Um, that is Saturday, June 14th. And they need a couple of areas for us to help in. Um, one area is the kids' activities. We won't need to bring anything or set up anything. They have all of the kids' activities um, planned. They just need people to man, like the bouncy houses. They need some help with concessions. So this little top area is if you are interested in helping with kids' activities. And then the bottom part of this sign-up sheet is to help with the parade. I'm not 100% sure of what kind of help they're looking for. I'm guessing... Um, like traffic control uh, we don't have to actually be in the parade but they did ask for some volunteers to help with that and that would go from 3 to probably 6 ish so that's mobile days on Saturday June 14th the bottom sign up sheet is for vacation Bible school I talked about this last week as well um, Trinity Lutheran Church is hosting vacation Bible school for the whole community of mobile but all of us other churches like to send volunteers to help I'll be helping um, but we're, we're lacking volunteers, and we all know how important Vacation Bible School is. So the bottom sign-up sheet is if you are interested in helping with that. I know the times conflict with many people who work, but even if you could maybe bring treats or if we need some supplies, possibly you could get some of those. Um, we have a meeting also this Wednesday at 7.30, and I will be attending that. But if anybody else wants to join me, that would be fantastic. So can I start this? Okay, Signing. a couple of other things. We need some volunteers. Um, you know, to, to have a great service and have a fantastic church, we really need people to sort of step up and help out with some of the, you know, some of the things that need to be taken care of here at church, such as cleaning, um, the ushers and, and greeters. We need some more people who would be willing to step up and help with that. Jake, you guys, is that a tough job back there? Yeah, I mean, you got to be very skilled, right? <laughs> Yeah, so if you're interested in greeting um, or ushering, 
please contact Edie. Edie, could you stand up there so everybody knows? Who, I think most people know who you are. But we really need greeters and um, ushers. We also need some help <coughs> down with the kids. So if you're interested in helping with the kids, either the littler kids, three and under, um, or Kids Church, which is four up to like 10 or 11, you can contact me or Aaron, who is downstairs right now. So we're always looking for people to help out with, you know, teaching our children. I think that's it. Does anyone have any other announcements that I'm missing? Yes, Margo. Is there any chance we could like post that to Facebook maybe? Possibly? And everybody can have access? Okay, I think that's all. Okay, thank you, Stacia. I got one other announcement. I did get a message from uh, Pastor Edgar I'd like to read to you. Denise and I want to thank everyone who has been praying for us and Denise's father. He is doing much better and is back home. He did not go through heart surgery because he is not strong enough to go through it but your prayers have gone, not gone unanswered. Doctors do anticipate my father-in-law to get better and to live for some time. A lot better news than we had two weeks ago. We miss all of you and can't wait to continue to minister beside you all. Summer is in full swing, and we hope that you all continue to be excited about what God is doing through you and all of us together. This is a vital summer for new hope as we strive to continue God's movement and impact those around us for his kingdom. In the months to come, I will be meeting with our leadership team and with all who consider themselves a part of New Hope Church to confirm vision and church direction. I can honestly say that I am extremely excited about our future together and can see what God is doing through, your, uh, through our obedience. If you haven't yet seen our, yourselves as vital to God's kingdom, please begin to tell yourself that without you, we, New Hope, would struggle to accomplish what God has called us to do. I'll see you all in a week and hope to see you all participate in our community missional outreach efforts with the love of Jesus, Pastor Edgar Rodriguez. So he's thinking of us. And I'm sure we've all been thinking of him and I'm praying for him and we're hearing some good reports. So that's great that things are going well down there. And he'll be back next week. Um, so just wanted to share that with you. And now we're going to take up our offering today, an opportunity we have to uh, give unto the Lord as he's given unto us and to... Uh, Share our blessings with one another. So if ushers want to come on down. Uh, Stacia was talking about the need for more ushers and that kind of thing. One of the fun things you get to do is come up and collect all this money. So, all right. so if you like handling money, it be a good thing to do. Father God, we thank you for this great opportunity we have once again to uh, worship you through our offerings. Thank you, Lord, how you blessed us. We thank you that uh, we have this opportunity once again to uh, share with, uh, with uh, what we have to give a new hope and to give around the world to build your kingdom. We just thank you, Lord, for your word and how it promises that as we give and do, you will give back. Maybe not the same ways, Lord, but you will continue to give. We just thank you for that. In Jesus' special name we pray, amen and amen. So as the offering is going around today, if look around and see if there's anybody here you haven't seen before, haven't met, then just take a minute or so and go around and shake their hand, welcome them here to New Hope, and tell them that uh, we're glad they're here today. I'm glad each one of you are here today. So if you see somebody you haven't uh, seen before, or maybe just like to go and talk to him. That's fine. So uh, let's do that. I see a young man over here that I need to talk to. Back into our worship time now. And as we do that, I love worship. If you've seen me worship, you know I love to worship. I was in here this morning as they were preparing. And I brought tears to my eyes. The presence of God is just so strong. The Holy Spirit was here. And I just know he continues to be here to rule and to reign. So we just want to follow his lead and see what he has in store for us today so as we sing these songs think about what you're singing and uh these first the, we're going to sing a song called uh blessed be the name blessed be the, whose name are we going to bless jesus right we're all about jesus we're going to talk about blessing the name of jesus so think about some of those blessings you may have in life and also realize that life isn't always easy you go through some times where there's struggles and there's hurts and there's pains well, Jesus is there for that as well. And there's blessings that come out of that. In Romans 8, 28, it says, All things work for the good of those who love Christ Jesus and are called according to his purpose. That means we can take a look at a situation that looks bad, but if you believe in Jesus, if sooner or later that's going to turn around and you're going to find some good in it. It just helps us have that positive attitude, knowing that Jesus is there, Jesus cares. Um, so as we sing these songs and we're singing and something sparks your interest or 
God just really speaks to you, feel free to come on up here and tell us about what's going on. You know, if there's some need that you have, you need prayer, come on down while we're singing, I'll pray for you. Um, after the service, be willing to pray for you. If you've got a story you want to tell, a testimony of what God's done, a God moment this week that you want to share, we're just open to do all that because that builds people's faith. One of the best ways my faith is built is by hearing what God's doing in other people's lives because then I begin to see, what's, well, what's God doing in my life? I begin to realize the things that are happening aren't just happening for no purpose, but they happen because God cares about me. And that's just so awesome. So I love to hear what God's doing in other people's lives as well and what we can learn from those things. So we're going to do that this morning, and I've got a story to tell, but I've asked my daughter to tell it instead, because it was actually her experience, and, and Sarah was involved, and uh, so we're going to have talk about a God moment, and what that God moment was, and what that God moment can teach us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right now. Kind of get everybody warmed up, so we'll be thinking about this, you know, what God moment can you share as we uh, go through the service today? You know, this is my daughter, Stacy Orndorff, by the way. She's, she's been here a couple times before. She's the executive director of Atlas of the Valley Ministries down in Correctionville. And uh, just uh -huh. had a neat experience this week. One of many. Good morning. Good morning. I've been contemplating how to kind of tell this testimony. Um, so I thought back to the day that it happened. And it was a Thursday, last Thursday. And... My day on Thursdays, I have a pretty consistent Thursday. I go to Sioux City, and I do all of the shopping for the Java Hub, which is six gallons of milk, usually, and um, 20 pounds of coffee and all these smoothie stuff. So it's a long day in the city. Cattery is usually with me, and it's exhausting, and we just go from one place to the next. So this was that Thursday, and... Um, when we got home that day, we pulled up next to the Java Hub, and it must have been early afternoon, and when we pulled up, there was a guy on a motorcycle that was parked in front of our food pantry, the Food Hub, which is right next to the Java Hub, and he had big giant backpack, and it looked like he was kind of putting it back on, and so I thought, oh, that's interesting. Um, I don't know if he's here to get food from our food pantry, if he's just passing through. So I got out and decided to ask him, how can I help you? And he said he was just there to hoping to get a cup of coffee and some food. Well, I didn't know if that meant food from the food pantry, food from the Java Hub, if he had you know, a need for food or if he just wanted to buy some good scones or something. And so I just kind of started a conversation to find out what he really needed. And um, he just was passing through and was hoping to get coffee and a bite to eat. So I invited him in. I said, we're not open, but I just got supplies. You're welcome to come in. I'll make you a latte or a smoothie, whatever you want. So he took me up in the offer, took all of his gear off, and came in. And, and so just kind of started to talk to him and find out first of all, what he wanted to drink, and right off, he wanted a shot of espresso. So to me, that shows he's a serious coffee drinker. He knows coffee. Because usually people, they'll be like, oh, I don't know, what do you recommend? I haven't really had anything. So I knew right off the bat, okay, this guy knows coffee. And so we talked some more, and Caterbury helped him and got a shot of espresso for him and talking and then Sarah came in with her kids because she cleans the Java Hub every Thursday and they were there to clean and talking some more with this guy and asked him where he's heading he was going to Wyoming he had a class that he was starting um, he's a geology major at UNI and found out he's also a barista in Cedar Falls a barista is a coffee server at a coffee house and so I of course was nervous that he might not like our coffee or he may know more than me or whatever um, and I asked him if he knew any latte art because that's one thing we're kind of lacking is how to make the hearts with the milk and all of that and he did I said would you come back and show us how to do that and yeah yeah I'll, I'd be glad to show you he was thrilled um, 
so he did that. We talked. We found out he's a geology major, like I said, and he said he had an emphasis in hydrology and something else. And I, what is hydrology? And he said water and helping with clean water. And I said, well, what do you want to do with that kind of major? And he said, well, I want to do missions work. And um, I've really been thinking about Muslims and um, hydrology, clean water. So Sarah's cleaning, bending down, I think you were even on the floor maybe, cleaning coffee grounds. And she popped up and she said, well, you should go to Ethiopia because they have dirty water and there's lots of Muslims and come to find out the only place he has been to outside of the United States is Ethiopia. He had gone there for a short-term thing, had been to the capital. And so that was really cool that here this guy at this time just had all those connections. Um, long, long story. He's going to come back through. He's going to stay with us and he's going to do a, it's called a coffee cupping and it's where you test different coffees. I've been working on this for a couple months and just haven't known how to do it. And actually, a couple days before this guy showed up, I remember having a conversation with God, just saying, you know what? It must not be time because it's not coming together in my head. And that's a clue for me to know I'm working ahead of God's schedule. And he will send the resources or the people or the knowledge when it's time. So here this guy comes, he's done or been part of coffee cuppings, he's willing to do it when he comes back, and so here I don't have to figure any of that out, he's going to do that, which is awesome. Doesn't sound real important in the kingdom of God, but it is to me. Um, so reflecting on that whole situation, you just can't help but think, what is this all about? I'm an analytical person. So, of course, I want to know, you know, what is this? What am I supposed to learn from this? What's the moral of the story? Or, and sometimes it's nothing. But the few things that I came up with is being a follower of Christ, a lot of times is just about placing yourself, following what God has called you to do, in whatever talent, whatever passion, whatever weakness, just placing yourself and saying, God, you've told me to do this. I don't understand it. I love coffee. Why? I don't know. But use it for your glory anyway. And so we have placed ourselves, myself, my family, in the bottom of this old church in very small living quarters, <laughs> in a somewhat dark basement, and it's discouraging sometimes. <laughs> and God has placed people like Sarah and Micah and my mom and dad and some other board members and volunteers that also love coffee and love loving people in that coffee place to be placed for God. We don't know what that's going to look like sometimes, but we're saying we're available and we're going to do this. So that's the first thing I realized. Just by placing myself there, I had this encounter with this guy. Two, God works in spite of me. I didn't set out that day to meet someone that was going to build my faith and make a connection and God worked in spite of me. He orchestrated my typical Thursday to get home right when I did. And this guy to come from Cedar Falls, from where he did at that moment, and our paths crossed. That, to me, brings me to my knees in awe of God. Because he's the only one that can orchestrate something like that. Next. Our conversation with this guy, we could have just got him coffee, sent him on his way, but because love flows out of us, we found out about his life. 
because of the love that was in him that flowed out of him he found out about ours and we were able to connect and get to the Ethiopian part that's <laughs> what I what I call it um, and that's Christ in me I am naturally an introverted person I am a selfish person I don't love people but with Christ I love people and most days it just flows out of me and I don't have to try thank God but my nature is I don't want to find out about your life I'm too busy I got my own thing going on you know but if we would have been that way that day our faith would not have been built and the same with him he wanted to know everything about Atlas of the Valley the Java hub um, next I didn't know if it was just me that noticed but when I mentioned it to my mom and dad on the way here I noticed that neither one of us spoke a Christianese language and I don't know if you're familiar with that but us Christians tend to use weird terms that maybe the rest of the world doesn't understand or words that build us up to sound spiritual and it can just be simple things like my walk with Christ or traveling mercies or just sometimes we don't even know they're just part of us I've made a big effort in the last couple years for God to reveal those phrases and to get them out of my language so I could be more relatable to those that aren't in a Christian community and this guy did not speak Christianese I was so excited about that that in the end we were able to find out that we both are followers of Christ but we didn't speak Christianese and that may not be a big deal to most people but to me it was a huge faith builder that there's others out there like me and if I would have spoke in this Christianese language and he wasn't uh, a follower of Christ see I'm using all these Christianese terms um, it may have pushed him away and I would never have found out more about him and vice versa and then the last thing the why of the whole thing to me was just to build my faith just to encourage our ministry and for Sarah to be there and my dad and mom and we also had another guy that's a regular um, can come in too and it just confirms you are doing the right thing you're in the right place at the right time your light is going you're shining it and I'm sure this man's faith who his journey was just beginning out to Wyoming his faith was built along the way too that God was with him and that he was doing the right thing thank you Stacy <clears throat> now as you hear that story, true story, absolute truth, what does that make you mindful of that's going on at New Hope? Is that a confirmation of exactly what Pastor Eggers has been teaching this last series about be who you are, where you are, be real, no matter where your work, or your family, wherever, you're, Christ is there, you're there, he puts things together, Make sure that we share a faith. That's exactly what, what happened that day. And that's exactly what Pastor Edgar is encouraging us to do. We don't have to go out and do some great, big, fantastic mission trip. Just going down to Anth and, and being with those kids has more impact than you realize. We got this Mobile Day School. That's going to have more impact on them children than you realize. Because those are God encounters. He sets them up. He makes them happen. Just like he made this happen to build Stacy's faith and our faith. He does that for us all the time. But we've got to look for it sometimes. Sometimes we don't know why things happen. Begin to analyze like Stacy did. Begin to see what God's teaching you. Anyway, praise God. We're going to worship some more. And as we worship, if you've got a God moment you want to share, come on up and we'll give you the mic. And you can share that if you've got a testimony of what God's doing in your life, whatever. Just feel free to do that today as we worship. Because okay? I know that I probably should have done that. I probably should have waited. But In the Bible, Jesus said, if you don't praise me, the rocks will. The rocks will actually begin to praise God, which is a way of saying his creation praises God. We are living. In
and we can praise God. If that rock is dead and they can praise God, certainly we cannot praise that rock. So that rock just a reminder to us to praise God because if we don't, it will. Let's continue to praise the Lord. Is there a praise you want to give today? Yes. What a testimony of that young kid. Amen. Woo! I'm excited, boys. Girls, I'm excited. Oh, man. I feel... You got something you want to share? Oh. <laughs> All right. Mike, you got anything you want to share about Stampede? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess. Did you win or lose? Um, yeah, we won, so that's a good thing. Woohoo! Um, I guess I'm not usually one that, that God really cares too much about football because it's a game, and both sides are praying, so it's not like it's a <laughs> praise harder thing. Um, but yeah, you know, when you were talking earlier about kind of the thing that uh, Stacey was saying, you know, something that you don't know why you love coffee, it's just something. I guess that's been my thing for football. Um, didn't play in high school, didn't play in college. And so, like, when this when this came around, I was actually talking to go into the, uh, the Bandits tryout by Greg. He actually paid for my tryout, too. Thanks. Um, and then led to the Stampede thing, and I, you know, I kind of, I was talking to Sarah afterwards, and I'm like, it doesn't make sense. I mean, I, I, there's no reason I should make this team based on my history. I should be on this team. Um, but I'm thankful for it, and I think God's got some sort of purpose from it. I don't know what that is. And then I went and blew out my ACL, which was lovely. Um, and that was another kind of, okay, what's going on here? Um, but, you know, I got, God's got a, a bigger plan than I do, Amen. you know. Amen. Uh, selfishly, I want to play, because I... I don't know why I just love the game, um, but you know God. Uh, God can work through that. I'm not. I'm not one of the people that uh, that says that everything happens for a purpose. You know, I think sometimes things happen because sins in the world, and we make stupid decisions. And, um, but I do believe that God can bring purpose through everything. Amen. Uh, and so, you know, that, that's my prayer. Is just, you know, what's my role in this? What does God have for me? And, uh, um, yeah, above winning. You know, because that's a small thing. You know, it's just a a little thing really in the grand scheme, but, um, yeah, just, uh, Amen. glory to God. Amen. Amen. Any special prayer needs going on in your life? Yes. Nevea? What? I don't know. Energy. Get busy to Amen. Amen. Yes. Well, praise me. Welcome, Uncle. Glad you're here. Amen. Oh, God is so good. God is so good. I could just, like, sometimes I could sing of it praises all day long. I'd rather praise than preach. Probably tell as I kind of put it off. <laughs> <laughs> we may not even preach today. I'm just, uh, just see what the Lord has for us here today as we uh, just listen to Him, what He's got to say, what's going on. You want to sit down? That's fine. You don't have to stand up just because I'm standing up. You want to sit down and take it easy? That's fine. If you want to stand up, that's fine too. No rules. No rules. Okay. Oh. Praise God. It's going to rain tonight, right? Yeah. Praise God. He, praise God. He cares about the little things in our lives. As we've heard this morning, He cares about the little things in our life. If we like coffee, if we like football, if we like spray, He cares. He cares. He cares about little children who have to go to the emergency room. He cares about... We don't have enough energy. He cares. He meets those needs. We'll just kind of be quiet for a second. And just, Lord, just, let, just open your mind to receive what he might have to say to you this morning. And if you feel like something you, you need to share, this is the time to share that.
silent <laughs> makes a lot of people nervous. We've gotten used to it. Because it's in that silence. It's in that silence that God begins to speak to us because we're no longer talking, we're listening. So I just want to spend a few moments this morning listening. See what he has to say to us. Perhaps as you're sitting there listening, all of a sudden a, some scripture will pop in your head like, whoa, where would that come from? Maybe that's a scripture he wants you to share for us this morning. So look it up quick and then share that with us. God, we thank you for this time. Just a time to be in your presence. Just a time to be still and to see what you've got to say to us. Time to lay at the altar those things that uh, we have needs of, Lord God. And so this morning we come and we lay things at the altar before you. We get down we bow before you, Lord, this morning, seeking your guidance, your direction. Lord, we pray for this little child this morning who's had to make these trips to the emergency room, Lord God, we just lift them up to you. Lord, you know what the situation is. We just take them to the right people, Lord, that give the right care and make the right choices and decisions that that child will walk out of there, Lord, and, and will live a life that glorifies you. Be with that family, Lord God, as they go through that time of uh, sorrow and need and frustration and worry, Lord, just be there to meet that need. Lord, we pray for that extra amount of energy we need lord life gets so busy sometimes it just wears us out think about what we got to do the next day that we can't rest at night lord let us learn to take one day at a time as your word says in matthew just take one day at a time tomorrow's got enough to worry about just take care of today lord we want to do that we want to live a life that does that that we don't have a life full of worry and fret but lord we want to have time and the energy to accomplish those things especially Lord those things that build your kingdom continue to reveal to us Lord in each of our lives what we can do to build your kingdom right here in, in Moville and surrounding area Lord God how we can reach out to those that we haven't even thought about reaching out to mindful Lord of last week we had a lady here who was a neighbor that because a person goes here invite them to come and they came and their hearts were touched Lord, just continue to bring people in that we can minister to and, and reach out to, Lord God. And if they don't know you as their Lord and Savior, Lord, that they can come to know you as a Lord and Savior. Just thank you, Jesus, for that. Lord, we also pray for those who may have a, a financial situation in life, Lord. As they say that we're in bad economic times, Lord God, and, and uh, that's a relative thing, Lord. But if there's people right now, Lord God, are especially hurting in their lives because the finances are not there, Lord. Just show in a miraculous way, Lord, be revealed to them how that's going to happen or just cause it to happen, Lord. Lord, you have the, the cattle on a thousand hills, Lord. you got all this out there. Lord, if, it, if some of that can be used to help people, Lord, that's what we desire. Lord, if you need to speak to somebody here today to help somebody else, I finance you, Lord, help us to be open to that. Help us to listen to that. Lord, if there's a, a physical need, somebody has a, an ache or a pain or a uh, uh, some form of health issue, Lord God, whether it's ongoing, long-term, or something that's just recent and short-term, Lord. We lift them up to you and pray that you might heal them, Lord God. As your word says, Lord, that the people can be healed. So we thank you for that, Lord. Thank that you can heal broken relationships. Lord, there might be somebody here today who is not getting along with their child or husband and wife grandparents, children, maybe it's at a boss and the employer, employee thing, Lord, whatever it is, if there's something not going quite right, we lift that up to you this morning, Lord, asking you to do a mighty work there as well. Just thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much. We just continue to thank you and worship you, Lord, for all that you are, all that you do. It's just uh, awesome to be in your presence, Lord God, and glorify you oh my goodness amen, amen. Woo. sorry i got kind of carried away there forgot about <laughs> what we're here about i guess um or part of what we're here about is a message today so 
We're going to have a, uh, my granddaughter's here today. She's going to have a seat. She's going to sing a special number for us that she uh, picked out especially for today. And then uh, I'll tell a little more, bit more about this rock up here. We got to thank God for that anyway, don't we? Amen. Remember our blessings, remember our blessings. Seems like we're talking a lot about blessings today and singing songs about blessings and, and that. Um, I'm going to uh, give you a very, very short message. Um, not what I planned, we're running out of time, and that's okay. Um, um, I hold the record for going the longest, Edgar said, when I was here a few weeks ago. So I'm trying to get the record for the shortest. So, so we could just quit now, which is, which is a possibility. Um, just, but it's hard not to share with you what I wanted to share with you too. That, uh, I'm going to share it with you just briefly. Bring it, Bring it on, okay? Law. Anybody know what the law is? When you hear the word law, what comes to mind? Anybody got any thoughts about law? Run. Yeah, there we go. The law is coming. Okay. Next slide, there's, when we think about law, there's lots of different ways we can think about the law. We think about lawyers, we think about you know, the rules and regulations, we think about uh, being in trouble with the law, and so we want to run, don't we? Um, we're going to talk more about the last and their truths. The law can also be truths, the truths of the laws in, in science that are true. Go to the next slide. Like thermodynamics is all about heat and cold. There's truths in that, right? If anybody studied, we know that things get hot, things get cold, there's reasons for that. We know electromagnetism gives us electricity, that's a truth. Quantum mechanics, I have no idea what that's about. Uh, chemistry, there are a lot of truths in chemistry, a lot of facts, there are, uh, um, things in chemistry that are true. Uh, a lot of laws, of geophysical laws, and there's biological laws. These are laws that God's kind of set up, they're going to fall in place. For example, if I take this rock... And I let go of this rock, what's going to happen? Why? Law of gravity, right? It's a law. It's going to happen every time. Every time I drop that rock, it's going to fall, unless, unless I take this rock and I rub it like this, rub it like this, put it next to my heart, and now that rock is not going to fall to the ground. Do we want to test my theory? <laughs> Do you think the law of gravity has been defied because I've done that? No, why not? Because it's a law. It won't change. It's going to drop every time. It's going to drop every time I drop it, whether it's on Mike's head or it's on the floor, but it's going to drop. That's a law. Now, today I want to talk about another law, uh, the law of the harvest. And this is truth. Every time it's a truth. Uh, Galatians uh, 6, 7 to 9. Let's see the next slide. It says, this is verse 6, Don't be misled. You cannot mock the justice of God. You'll always harvest what you plant. There's a law. You will always, 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 always harvest what you plant. That is a law. It's never going to change, right? Never going to change. I've got a little cup here. I'm going to pass these around. Everybody take one of these little seeds. And we're going to talk about the law of the harvest. And the custodian is not going to like me very well after today, but then some days I'll take my turn. So we got what I have here is little soybean seeds. In this time of year, we've got farmers out there putting these in the ground, right? All kinds of soybean seeds go in the ground right now. And... Uh, So as we stick that soybean in the seed, the law of the harvest says, next slide, what you reap, what you will sow. So if we take a soybean seed and we put it in the ground, what are we going to get back? What are we going to get back? Anybody? Soybeans. Why? Because you reap what you sow. I'm not going to get corn growing out there just because I planted soybeans. I'm going to get a soybean. I'm not going to get a carrot or a wheat or a tree. I'm going to get a soybean. The law of the harvest will never change. Just like this rock will always drop, this will always happen. Next one. Point two, you always reap more than you sow. Right? If I take this one soybean, I put it in the ground, it grows up. Do I get one back? Oh, yeah, but I get a whole lot more. 
You'll get a, a plant. How many are we getting a plant, Jeff? Any idea? Hundreds? Okay, a couple hundred. So that's a pretty good return. I'd like to put a penny in the bank and get 200 back in a few months' time. It don't happen that way. But, but it's the truth. When you, when you sow something, you always get more back than you put in. There's a, a weed called a pigweed seed. The thing is so tiny, it looks like a little piece of pepper. But you plant that, and it grows a seed. You'll get tens of thousands off that one seed. Just amazing how some weeds can produce. But that's the law. The law says you're going to reap more than you sow. Next slide. You're going to... You're going to is there a picture of thing up there? Yeah. You will reap after you sow. You're not going to eat anything you put in the ground first, right? Those farmers can have a bag of seed sitting there or a tank of seed. Leave it sitting there. Next fall comes. It's still going to be sitting there, right? Until they plant it. So you don't get any harvest until you sow it first. So we've got to sow that to get it back. Okay? Fourth law. You reap it where you sow it. If I plant that out here in the yard, is it going to grow in Correctionville? No, it's going to grow right there. It's going to grow where you put it. You're going to reap from where you sow it at. So that's the four basic laws that we can deal with when we talk about the law of the harvest. Now, what's that got to do with us? Good question. What difference does it make whether that stuff is true or not? In our lives, as a Christian, big deal. The soybean grow. We all know that. We grow up in the Midwest. We see it happen every year, whether it's corn or beans or whatever in your garden. We know that's true. But... There's always a lesson. Jesus has a lesson for us here. Let's go to the next verse. This is verse 8. It says, Those who live only to satisfy their own sinful nature will harvest decay and death from that sinful nature. But those who live to please the Spirit will harvest everlasting life from the Spirit. Now, if you take a close look at that, what that's saying is we can plant different kinds of seed. We can plant bad seed and we can plant good seed. If you plant bad seed, what are you going to get back? Bad stuff. If you plant good seed, what are you going to get back? Good stuff. Okay? Begin to see how this might work in our lives. Let's go over into Galatians chapter 5. If you read Galatians chapter 5, uh, verses 21 to 23, it says, These are things you should not do, such as have impure thoughts, should not be eagerness for lustful pleasure, should not have adultery, spiritism, hatred, je fighting, jealousy, anger, selfishness, complaints, criticism, I'm always right, having the wrong doctrine, envy, murder, drunkenness, and wild parties, etc. These are things we should not do. Why? They're bad seed. If I go out and I'm angry, I see some anger, what am I going to get back? Why? Why anger? Why would I get anger back? Why not love? Because you reap what you sow. See the point? You reap what you sow. You don't reap anger and get love back. You don't, you don't sow lies and get truth back. You don't... Uh, get uh, so jealousy or hatred you don't sow any of those things you get back the other side of what you want you only get back what you sow and that's what you're going to reap next slide good seed ah we have some good seed it goes on to Galatians the next couple of verses says but these are the fruit of the spirit love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithful gentleness self control these are good seeds so if I go out and I plant love what am I going to get back Love, if I plant joy, what am I going to get back? If I plant patience, whatever you plant is what you're going to reap. Remember, the other law says you're going to get back more. That means if you plant bad seed, you're going to get way more back than you planted. Same way on the other side. If I plant a little bit of love, I'm going to get a whole lot more love back or a whole lot more joy. Because the law of the harvest says you get back more than you sow. It also says where you sow it. If I sow that within my family... That's where I'm going to get my good love, joy, peace, patience back. I can't uh, go to work and be nice to all my employers there and love them and have a good time, be patient with them, and then go home and expect good to be there if I didn't plant it there. Right? A lot of times we go to work and we're nice and we come home and we're all we're getting, you know, growly and get grapey. All day long we plant this good seed. Work back to work the next day. You got, where'd you get? You got it back at work, right? Because that's where you just planted it. You didn't get it at home. You got to plant that at home if you want to get it back at home. You got to plant that love and that joy and the peace and the patience at home if that's where you want to get it back. So it's where you it's where you plant it. It's where you're going to get it back as well. And you're not going to get it if you don't plant it first. The fourth law was you only get it after you plant it. So don't expect somebody to love you if you don't love them. The law says you got to plant it first to get it back. 
you want joy, plant some joy. It's not going to be there just because you want it. You've got to plant it. Or patience, or kindness, or goodness. Any one of these. If you don't plant them, you're not going to get them back. Where you plant them is where you're going to get it back. You're going to get back more than you planted, and you're definitely going to get what you reaped, what you sowed. Amen. That's my point today. Okay. We're going to finish up with a song today. Uh, well, there's one more scripture, I think. Because it talks about, don't get tired of doing it. You know, sometimes we give up and say, ah, it's too hard to be loving, joyful, peaceful, patient, kind, good. Yeah, it's hard, but don't give up. Because it says, don't get tired of it. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if you don't give up. Keep working at it. Just because it's hard, you don't give up. Just because it, the ground is hard, the farmer don't give up. He goes out there and he tills it up, he stirs it up, and gets it. Just because it doesn't rain, he keeps praying for rain. We've got to keep doing those things to make it happen. So don't give up just because it's hard. And because then the blessings come and then we'll get the harvest. Next. So remember, you reap what you sow, you reap more than you sow, you reap after you sow, and you reap where you sow. And, and keep that in mind in terms, not the soybean seed, that, yeah, that's nice, but put that soybean seed in your pocket. Remember, when you pull it out, this really represents love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These are the things I want in my life. That's that soybean seed I want to remember, help you remember. Okay? Just rattle off a bunch of Christianese, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, we're going to finish up with one more song today. And it's just a good song to remind us once again how good God is and what he does for us. The song is called You Are Good. He is good. So just as you get to this song, think about all the things that the God is good and uh, what he's done for you in your life. And just kind of let that flow through you as you leave today and as you go into this next week. Remindful how good God is in our lives. <laughs>